Throughout the generations, Gedolei Torah have served as guiding lights for Jews of all ages, setting examples with their special dedication for Torah and Klal Yisrael. Some Gedolim influenced their immediate surroundings, whether in a yeshiva setting or in a small community. And a few select Gedolim have the courage, charisma and scholarship to build communities and inspire generations of followers. One such Godel was Rav Dr. Joseph Breuer Zetzal, who built a vibrant Jewish community in Washington Heights during the difficult years of World War II. His foresight and determination created a Kehillah whose influence has been felt around the world. Rav Breuer came from a family of Gedolim. He was the grandson of Rav Shamshin Rafael Hirsch, the premier exponent of the way of life of Torah and Derech Eretz, who was most responsible for revitalizing Torah in Germany in the mid-1800s. Under Rav Hirsch, the Kehila, Kahaladas Yeshurun, established a school which grew from 84 Talmudim to more than a thousand at its peak. Rav Hirsch's son-in-law, Rav Shlomo Breuer, a Talmud of the Ksav Sofa, was the Rav in Papa, Hungary. After Rav Hirsch's passing, he became Rav Hirsch's successor and continued his work in Frankfurt. He established a Yeshiva Gedola and served as Rav of the Kehillah as well as Rosh Yeshiva. Rav Shlomo's son Joseph became his Talmud and received Smicha in 1903 from his father and from Rav Koppel Reich of Budapest, Hungary. After completing his PhD in philosophy and political economy in 1905, Rav Joseph Breuer returned to Frankfurt and joined the faculty of the Realschule, the Frankfurt Yeshiva High School, where he taught Gemara, Tanakh, German, and history. He also gave Gemara Shiurim in his father's Yeshiva. In 1911, he married Rika Eisenman of Antwerp, the daughter of Jacob Eisenman, a former student of Rav Hirsch. Rav Breuer and his wife had eight children. It was during this time that his mastery of Gemara and Tanakh gained a widespread following. He published commentaries to Yirmiyahu, Yecheskel, and the Piyutim of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Upon his father's passing in 1926, Rav Breuer assumed the role of Rosh HaYeshiva. After World War I, in the 1920s, early 20s, my grandfather, Rav Shlomo Breuer, the Frankfurter Rav, and who was the Rosh Hashiv at the same time, became very ill. And my father, who always was at the side of his father, since both lived in Frankfurt, had at that time to take over the factual management of the yeshiva, not only the organization, but also shiurim, the hauptshir and the nebenshir, because my grandfather was practically incapable to really actively lead the yeshiva. The Frankfurt community flourished until Hitler came to power in 1933 and began the destruction of European Jewry. As the political and economic situation deteriorated in Germany, Rav Breuer accepted an invitation to move his yeshiva to Fiume, Italy. The experiment, however, was not successful, and the family returned to Frankfurt. In 1938, during Kristallnacht, the Rav was arrested and forced to stand for many hours before being released by the Germans. The yeshiva was subsequently disbanded and the Rav and his family fled to Belgium. It was in Antwerp that a former student, Mr. Jacob A. Samuel of New York, convinced Rav Breuer that he was needed in New York. At age 57, Rav Breuer and his family settled in Washington Heights, where a small group of Balabatin urged him to become their leader and guide. We arrived here on February 2nd, 1939, on the Normandy. Mr. Samuel, who had brought us over, picked us up at the boat and took us to his house. His apartment was on the second floor, and he rented an apartment for us on the ninth floor. My parents, my brother Samson, my sister Sophie, and myself. And that first Shabbos, Three men walked down from Washington Heights and invited my father to come and join them in their minion, which we did the following week. 
my mother took an apartment in 541 West 180th Street. And from there, the, the little minion grew every week when people arrived. And the following Shabbos, we went to this minion at 185th Street and St. Nicholas Avenue, I think. And my father asked, what time is the minion? Tomorrow morning, Sunday? No, we only have this place for Shabbos. So he said, then we have it in our apartment, in our living room. And that's where the Gehilla grew. And by Pesach, we already had 90 Bennett Avenue rented with, by the board under the heading of Mr. Walter Joseph. And uh, that is the beginning of our growing Gehilla. It was a new beginning for Judaism in the Heights. Rav Breuer's vision of a full-service Kehillah encompassing all aspects of Jewish life was soon to become a reality. With the help of people such as Rabbi Herbert S. Goldstein and Rabbi Alexander Rosenberg, the Rav established an independent shechita and kasher supervision and supervised local butchers and bakeries. For the better part of a hundred years, the Grunebaum family had the privilege of being under the supervision of the Breuer family. First in Frankfurt, under the supervision of the late Rav Shlomo Breuer, and here in America, under the supervision of the late Rav Yosef Breuer. This supervision in our eyes is a tradition. It's a tradition of integrity in the kashrus world, not for money, but for a commitment to a Weltanschauen that was started by Rosham Shavol Hirsch. And even though it is over 20 years since Rav Breuer passed away, our company and our bakeries will always be known to have the Ashkocha of Breuer's. In 1943, the mikveh was built under the Kehillah's auspices. And in 1944, five years after arriving in America, Rav Breuer founded the yeshiva naming it after his grandfather, Rav Shamshin Raphael Hirsch. The Rav's son Jacob became the principal and remained in this position until his retirement 40 years later. Rav Breuer was an excellent teacher. He was a teacher above all teachers. And he had parlor meetings and he caused the start of the yeshiva here it was a privilege to learn with the Rav Breuer. He gave Gemur Shia and Tanach Shiurim and Tfilah Shiurim. He gave all kind of Shiurim to everybody and anybody that wanted to learn anything went to his Shiurim. Many German Jews were attracted to the Heights because of Rav Breuer's leadership and charisma. Since Rav Breuer was my Rebbe in Frankfurt in the Yeshiva, when I came to America, I first lived for a few years somewhere else, but I decided when I got married in Bitz Hashem, I'll be near Rav Breuer and let him advise me on my life, me and my family. I came to Washington Heights in 1944 and saw the development of the Gehille. Uh, one of the most important desires Rabbi Breuer had was to build up a yeshiva. He considered the yeshiva the very core and the future of the Kehillah. As the Kehillah grew, so did the yeshiva and the Rav's duties. He was the posek, advisor, scholar and teacher of one of the fastest growing Jewish communities in New York. He earned the respect of Jewish leaders throughout the area. Rabroya was a giant among men, an historic figure in our times. He combined vast Torah knowledge and at the same time genuine humility that made him beloved and revered by whoever came in contact with him. He sensed, though, that he was endowed with a mission by the Hashgacha of Yonah. He was to reconstruct a killer Kedosha and build a yeshiva from the shambles of war. Being a father and mentor to countless individuals, a leader and shepherd at the same time, 
the respect that he commanded, the siyat of the shmaya that he enjoyed, allowed him to accomplish this mission with great success, and it became a bracha to the cloud Yisrael. It is for the members of the present generation to continue the legacy that Rabroya began, to see to it that his tradition is preserved, enhanced, and may the memory of this great tzaddik be an everlasting schus. Rabroya oversaw all aspects of the burgeoning Kahila and officiated at all of the simchas in the Kahila. The Rav's wife was his main support in all phases of daily Kahila and personal life. Her great sense of practicality, her enormous Gimilas Chesed activities, and her cheerful presence made her the beloved mother of the Kahila. The spirited and loyal support of all members of the community, led by the longtime president, Dr. Raphael Muller, and the devoted cooperation of the members of the board of directors of the led by Harry Levy and Manfred Katzenstein, were a crucial factor in the Rav's success. The, the leadership of Rav Broya, and I think this is probably the best way of, to describe him, in all phases of life, and the influence he had with everything he said, everything he did, the way he conducted the, the, the business of, of the congregation and of the community, was astounding. And its effects still reverberate today, and hopefully for many, many more years. When I came to this Kehillah, there used to be a saying that Rav Breuer knows three sheens. Shabbos, Scheidel, and Schmusen. It is Rav Breuer's Zuchus that the Scheidel became public knowledge in our orthodoxy in America. And Schmusen, we don't schmooze. In 1952, the new shul was dedicated at 85 Bennett Avenue, with classrooms on the lower floor. Shortly thereafter, in 1953, the Rav's wife passed away, and the Rav and his son Jacob moved to 50 Overlook Terrace, together with his daughter Meta and son-in-law Jerry Bechhofer, and their three sons. When we moved here, it meant running a rabbinical household, which involved everything. But the, the Rav was busy with all the institutions and all the new, newly founded organizations that the Kehillah had, Shechita and supervisions, and which of course included also Levi's on very short notice. I was very inexperienced in running a rabbinical household, but I was fortunate to have the help of my sisters and brothers, who were always ready with practical help and good advice, but especially my brother Jacob, who lived with us. I very gradually got into it and ran it for 26 years, and we were very happy to have been able to do it. The Rav continued all his leadership and teaching activities, including a twice-weekly shear at his home. And in 1958, he asked Rav Shimon Schwab, the child, former Rav of Congregation Sha'eris Yisrael in Baltimore, to join him in what was to become a 22-year partnership. Rav Breuer's speeches were models of eloquence and passionate teaching. He forcefully preached the Hershian Torah and Derek Eretz philosophy, and he inspired his Kehila to bring up their children in the Derek Hayosha. For one month in the summer, the Rav came to Tannersville, New York, where he enjoyed learning with his grandchildren and receiving a steady stream of visitors. It was a unusual schuss to be able to learn with Rav Breuer, who was one of the leaders of orthodoxy, who was the, uh, the Rav of the Kehillah, and yet, as a grandchild, we felt very comfortable because we were his grandchildren, and there was no feeling of being overwhelmed by his presence. I started learning with my grandfather uh, when I was in high school. We learned Haftarah every week after Shul and Shabbos, and uh, because my grandfather was the master of teaching Tanakh, and he was insistent that we would understand what the Navi was saying to us. Um, my more constant uh, learning with him started in 1974. In the summer of 74, he wasn't able to see anymore to read. So I learned with him in Gemara Ashitosfis, one Mesechta after the other. And I was still learning with him on the Sunday night uh, before he was Nifter, the week he was Nifter. 
uh, in this room, we were learning on uh, that night, and he was as strong and uh, as ever, and with Hasmada as he was his whole life. The Rav's blessed life came to an end in 1980, on the 3rd of Eo, 5740, at the age of 98. Today, in the very study where he gave his shield, his grandson David is continuing what is still known as the Rav's shield. During the shiva for my grandfather uh, in 1980, I was asked by uh, Mr. Slomovitz, a member of the Shear, to take over, uh, which I was he hesitant to do, but was convinced to do so by family members. And so for the last 20 years, I've been saying this Shear, which actually was started by Dr. Forsheimer uh, in 1938. Uh, and my grandfather been giving, was giving the Shear since 1939. And we learn twice a week, Gemara Ashitosis in the same room, and it's a wonderful thing to continue this tradition. Rav Roya's legacy is his teachings, his kehillah, his yeshiva, and his writings. And the publication in English of the works of Rav Shamshin Rav He had rebuilt the community that the Nazis had taken from Am Yisrael and turned it into one of the most dynamic centers of kehillah life and Torah study in America. Today, the Broya Yeshiva consists of a sprawling elementary school, high school, Besa Medrash, Kolel, and seminary, educating hundreds of Bnei and Benos Torah every year. Rav Broya had a profound effect on world Jewry. Thousands of Talmidim have graduated the Broya institutions and have gone on to become leaders and productive members of Klal Yisrael growth of the Washington Heights Kehilla and Yeshiva into a bastion of Torah study is a testament to Rav Roya's vision and dedication. We salute the memory of Rav Dr. Joseph Roya, Zechat Tzadek Livracha.